Whoa, two beginner bike videos back to back. We're playing right down the Yammy Noob fairway and delivering you that sweet, sweet noob content that I know you love so much. Well, since yesterday, we spent a lot of time talking about the most powerful beginner bikes you can throw a leg over. And a lot of those bikes were right on the line of beginner bikes where you need to exercise a little judgment and you have to be more responsible. Why not make today's episode nice and cut and dry? These are seven motorcycles or categories of motorcycles that are horrible for beginners. In case you're on the fence with any of these motorcycles, let me help you make the call. Do not buy any of these bikes as your first bike. They're either way too powerful, too underpowered, yes, that is possible, or too expensive to make for a good learning tool. You want your first motorcycle to be a bike you're okay with dropping a few times, something you can practice the basic skills on in a forgiven environment. If it's not, you're gonna be stunting on your own progress, usually for nothing other than vanity because you're a big boy who don't need no stinking beginner bike. Well, enjoy looping your new leader bike at a red light. Don't worry, we couldn't figure out how to turn on launch control on the fire blade either. Since these are all hard passes, these aren't in any particular order, just don't buy them. Before we get started though, you know what's worse than getting one of those crappy beginner bikes starting with a crappy helmet. Luckily for you, we've got some brand new helmets in stock over at YN Moto. We've got the Nolan N45, which is a fancy take on the three quarters helmet with ECE and DOT stickers that you wanna see on your helmet. And then we got the rest of the Nolan helmets, it's packed with tons of features, but if you're a dual sport boy, we've added the EVS T5 lid, which is only 155 bucks, but it has everything you want out of your dual sport bucket. There's plenty more to check out, and remember every dollar you spend is an entry to win our giveaway motorcycles. Click the link down below and check out the new and improved YN Moto Shop. We're always adding new stuff, and we do appreciate it. Now let's get started with our first entry, the humble Suzuki Jixxer 250, a bike that I actually own for some reason. Look, we may have proven with extensive and highly skilled labor at a local's custom shop that every eye of detail that the Jixer is actually the world's most capable scrambler. I think that basically is the channel's crowning achievement in 2021. And I'll remind you that's the year we hit 1 million subscribers and turboed the Hayabusa. However, as a starter motorcycle, this is hands down the worst option you could run out and spend new money on. Suzuki saw Honda rocking that same old underpowered CBR 300R and said, hold my sake, senpai. For some reason, they thought it was a great idea to release a 249cc parallel twin motorcycle making only 25 horsepower and 17 foot-pounds of torque while also weighing in at almost 400 pounds wet and ready to ride. There is no reality in which the spec sheet simps can ever make that make sense. To make matters worse, it is scraping the bottom of the barrel when it comes to bargain bin parts. The forks came off a bicycle, the master cylinder is about as powerful as a turkey baster, and the stock pads will eventually stop the motorcycle, assuming you have enough runway to fall off the cliff of the edge of the earth. The frame is perhaps the most overbuilt chunk of steel I have ever seen, and I know what you're thinking, oh yeah, that sounds like it would be really good. Steel is stronger than aluminum, so it will withstand drops. And while that is technically true, it handles like a walrus on a mobility scooter. Usually we can find something, one tiny kernel on a motorcycle to point to and say this is good, or at least adequate, but on the Jixxer 250, the whole packet is just pretty abysmal and there's no saving it. But it does come in the X-Star livery for some reason, so you can accurately LARP as Rins and win no races. Sorry, Rins. Next up on the list are mini bikes, such as the Honda Grom Monkey and new for 2022, the Navi. There's plenty of other bikes out there in this category, but these are the most popular, so today they're the stand-ins for our list. They might seem like a good idea at first. When it comes to the Grom, it's a fully-fledged motorcycle. It's got a manual transmission, clutch, front and rear brakes, chain, and throttle. All the normal motorcycle stuff with a super approachable 30.1 inch seat height. The only problem is that it's much like the Jixxer 250. You don't have any power on tap with a whopping 9.6 horsepower and eight foot-pounds of torque out of its 125cc air-cooled bumper. Depending on your size, that's good for anywhere between 50 and 60 miles an hour at its absolute bleeding top speed. The Grom is not built to be a commuting motorcycle. Could you get to and from your downtown apartment and your office park and park the Grom in your apartment and get roughly a million miles to the gallon? Yes, of course. But if you need to stretch the Grom's legs even a little bit, then it's gonna beg for mercy quicker than an asthmatic hamster trying to climb the stairs. I have seen some people mention that they're thinking about picking up a Navi to start on because of the crazy aggressive price tag, and then move up to a real motorcycle. But the thing that you have to remember is that while the Navi might be a motorcycle-shaped object, it's really just a scooter. 
It doesn't have the clutch, meaning you won't develop those skills, and somehow it's even slower than a Grom. If affordability and seat height are major concerns for you, I would recommend taking a look at something like the Honda Rebel 300. They have even lower seat heights and a proper engine with six gears and will actually reach highway speed so you can learn how to really ride a real bike. Number three, Italian motorcycles. Ah, who wouldn't love to show up to bike night and plop down at the table smelling faintly of espresso and telling everyone that, yeah, I started on a Ducati. It's a massive flex, but the only problem is that starting on an Italian bike means you're diving straight into one of the most expensive money pits, and worse still, you probably got it used. Now look, do the Italians offer motorcycles that are appropriate for beginners to start on from a power and entry price perspective? Sure, you've got the Ducati 62, the old Monster 696, the Guzzi V7 line, and if you're a returning rider, you might be able to make the case for the base model to own 660. But in every case, they're going to be quirkier than their Japanese counterparts to almost a comical degree. Not only will Ducatis come with the financial baggage that is Desmo valve service, but finding neutral is a pain in the butt, and sometimes you might need to start them just right for them to be happy. You want your first motorcycle to do exactly what you tell it to do and when you tell it to do it, and sometimes on an Italian motorcycle your input is more of a suggestion than anything else. If you absolutely need to start European because you don't want Japanese for some reason, just get a KTM slash Husqvarna 390 401 bike. Yes, they're technically made in India, but that means they're more affordable and reliable. You can say what you want about the Bahaj bikes, but one thing they can do is build a tank of an engine that'll just keep on going. If it's after 2015 when they fix the head gasket problems. But if you have 10 grand burning a hole in your pocket, I would steer you away from the Italian motorcycles and towards Triumph. Either the Bonnie T100 street twin bikes or the Trident. They're Eurobikes without a bunch of the Eurobike problems. Number four, 600s. Which 600? All 600s. They're all awful places to start. I see this all the time. Someone new to motorcycling thinking that a small motorcycle like a 300 or a 400 just isn't going to have enough punch for them. But thinking that a 650 is just a bit too big and they're trying to split the difference with the 600 cc you gotta remember guys that in motorcycling the displacement of a motorcycle does not directly correlate to its power that's why 650s are way slower than 600s and 600s make as much power as 900s and some 450s make as much power as 650s there's so many letters and numbers in motorcycling that it's easy to get lost in the weeds but let me offer you a lodestar as you navigate your way through the thousands of voices trying to tell you on which bike to start out there on youtube 600s are horrible places for a beginner to start. Yes, the CBR 600RR is the slowest one, but it's still putting down 118 horsepower and 49 foot-pounds of torque. If you're the kind of person who doesn't want to listen to my advice, let me tell you what's going to happen to you on your 600. Just sit still and pay attention for like 30 seconds. You'll take your MSF course on an appropriate beginner bike, then you'll hop on your new 600 and realize that, wow, these ergos are really different and kind of uncomfortable, then you'll ride around for 30 minutes poodling around at like 6,000 RPM and you'll beg for death if the bike gets hot and your back starts hurting. Eventually, you'll want to experience what the fuss is all about and you'll wind that 600 out to 10 grand and start feeling a little something. And then you'll go to Redline and realize just how fast 118 horsepower really is. You'll go full plaid and probably need a change of underwear. Look guys, 600s are such bad street bikes that Yamaha, the manufacturer of perhaps the most popular sport bike ever in the form of the R6, decided to stop selling it for the street. Even Yamaha doesn't want you riding 600s on the street. Hopefully that explains a little something for you. Next up are project motorcycles. Nine times out of 10, I see someone posting up some converted supermoto build that the owner doesn't want anymore and saying that it's only a 250, should be totally manageable, right? Wrong. It's true that they're lighter weight than most street bikes, and lower weight is better for beginners, and there are a host of other problems that you're gonna encounter with a converted sumo. Without getting too far down the dirt bike rabbit hole, let me tell you that dirt bike motors are completely different to your usual street bikes. They're geared completely differently, and even with the lightest of throttle hands, can be a bit of a handful. Also, let's talk about the conversion process. It's a giant pain in the butt to do properly, and oftentimes costs more money than the owner realizes. That usually results in some corners being cut, and when you're talking about a thing you're gonna ride down the road potentially at highway speed, you really don't wanna trust your life to someone else's backyard building workmanship. Hell, that's why I don't even really ride the Jixxer 250 anymore. It's just a little sketch. The reason why Project Motorcycles are so eye-catching to beginners is that they're usually listed for crazy cheap on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, but it's worth spending just a little bit more on your first bike to ensure that your first riding experience is an enjoyable one. When you're looking at your first bike, steer clear of any conversions, kit bikes, or anything else that looks like it has lots of mods on it. It'll save you lots of heartache and probably a ton of cash. Next up, how many of you seen a video with the title, I bought the cheapest motorcycle from blank, where blank is some distributor for like Amazon, eBay, 
day or wish or something like that. I bet you've at least clicked on one of those videos. It's okay, we've all done it. Curiosity does get the better of us. Sometimes we're surprised when the person making the video says something along the lines of, you know what, it's really not that bad. As someone who spent a significant amount of time on the other side of the camera, let me tell you why those people are surprised. They were expecting that motorcycle to be an absolute steaming pile of trash. Those bikes are cheap for a reason. A lot of them still use carburetors, which is an added level of complexity, use crappy crate motors from China that you can't get spare parts for or service, and generally the fit and finish leaves a lot to be desired. If you buy a motorcycle, you want to do it from an owner who clearly took care of the bike, or you want to buy it from a local brick and mortar store so you can take it back to them if you have any issues. Also, one thing you might not think about is that uncreating a motorcycle means you have to do a lot of the basic setup that you might not have to otherwise do. Setting your cable slack, throttle free play, breeding blakes, and all that stuff is often something you need to do when you get one of these crate bikes from the internet. It's just not open up and ride away. It's just not worth it in my opinion. The last entry on this list are your old carbed motorcycles. This includes bikes like the CB750 and all their UJMs, early dual sports, or anything older than you are. These are usually dirt cheap motorcycles and some of them you can get on the cheap. I'm sure you've seen Florida's favorite son, Shade Tree Surgeon, running out and spending like 500 bucks on a bike and riding it across the country. Is that totally possible? Yeah, you've seen him do it in the videos, but you're probably going to encounter some issues and if you're a beginner you might not be able to quickly diagnose and fix those issues. When you're looking at bikes with more than one carburetor if they're just a bit out of sync then your bike is going to run like ass, be hard to start or in some cases it just won't turn over. When you're starting out you want your bike to just be reliable. Who cares if it's a little devoid of character and if you're going to ride it whenever you want you have to go through some ritual to start the bike like you're going to keep it from riding. It should be gear on, key on, bike on, not gear on, key on, try to start and then it doesn't, then gear off and diving into the tool roll. Also, old bikes usually have really crappy or unsafe brakes. Solid rotors aren't great, but in some rare cases you'll find drums, and those are basically the equivalent of using the Flintstones method of braking. If it's between some cheapo bike from the 80s and a Ninja 300, take the 300 every time. Fake fact, Napoleon was ashamed of his nipples and refused anyone to see them, even during medical treatments. Goodbye. Keep watching Yammy Noob! Keep watching Yammy Noob! Keep watching Yammy Noob! Keep watching Yammy Noob!